Good morning, everyone. Today's Sunday sermon is brought to you by Naproxen Sodium, also known as Aleve. Uh, they still haven't figured out a way that it will kill you, uh, like ibuprofen and acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, uh, will kill you. So if you're going to take something for pain, take this stuff. Also brought to you by Kirkland brand, which is a great value. I highly recommend Costco. Um, even if you almost get in a fight at the gasoline line, um, if you get the credit card that goes with it from Citibank, the cash back you, you get a loan just from buying gasoline uh, will pay for your membership at Costco. So um, I wanted to talk about several subjects today. Um, with the final subject being how to solve racism. The, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Ron Jeremy. Uh, Ron Jeremy is a, um, the most prolific porn star. Right now he's in jail for crimes that I believe he did not commit. Um, I think he's a political prisoner, and I think when Governor Newsom is finally out of office, magically Ron will be let go. So uh, the the thing that is is both very strange to me is that, of course, nobody wants to associate with Ron. Um, I think anyway, as far as the mainstream goes, but what you a lot of people miss is that. What can happen to Ron can happen to all of us, uh, which is that if enough people just get together and point fingers, it can absolutely ruin your life. And uh, there's no justice in that system. Uh, but I'll post a link to what's going on with him. And uh, again, um, I mean, I do have a vested interest. I have a, a bit part for him to play the sheriff in um, a movie that I wrote for my buddy. Uh, but, I mean, I mean, it's not that big a part. I can get somebody else that looks like Ron to, to play it, but it's just nostalgic. But um, I also wanted to talk about um, traveling. So, don't do it. Um, there's no reason for you to do it. Um, a lot of people say, well, there's nothing like it. Th th that is true. Um, there's also nothing like being home in your underwear and watching everything in HD on nature channels, National Geographic, whatever you be. Um, uh, you know, nothing matches the humidity or the bugs or the tourists or the heat or the cold or whatever the fuck it is that, that you see whenever you travel. You don't need to travel. Let go of that. Uh, that's a good practice in that. Um, save money, save time, and uh, visit in 30 to uh, one hour spurts. It's much better. Uh, Instagram is great for that. Um, I, you know, the Maldives actually is very, very beautiful on one side of the island. On the other side is covered in trash, but they don't advertise that part. So it's kind of weird that uh, that does exist, but it does. So I recommend you check that out. I'll post a couple of links of that. Um, I was I, I was reminded of a. Uh, I, I also subscribe to Architectural Digest, which is probably the most fancy thing that I subscribe to. the The problem with that channel is that it it typically has people on there that are very wealthy, um, and I find. Some wealthy people, very annoying in that they have no imagination and they just simply buy what their real estate agent or whoever tells them to buy. And uh, there was some rapper on there this week that, uh, I mean, he was, he was the most basic bitch. It was just, it was just gross. It was like, it reminded me of a, um, there was a, a baller. There's actually a lot of. Uh, ballers that live here in Arizona in the Phoenix metro area because it's affordable. It's nice. The weather's good. 
Um, and then they'll commute to each game and also to street, uh, spring training and all that kind of stuff. So, like, even people that uh, play for the New York Jets will live here. So, but I had a, a brother's baller or ba baller's brother come in <clears throat> and uh, he's like, yo, man, I want the best. I was like, okay. And I showed him some of the, the work that I've done. And he's like, nah, nah, son. Where's the JL audio? I was like, ugh. Oh. This fucking guy. And, and that's the thing is, you know, you can be rich in this country and not know anything. You can be famous uh, and everybody love you and not know anything. So, I mean, that's what's great about the country, but it's also kind of gross. But anyway, that's my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, the guy wanted jail audio. I was like, you don't want something custom that nobody else has for less than what JL costs. He's like, nah. He's like, okay, bye. And then he got pissed off that I told him <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> but again, it, you know, <clears throat> we all need that, uh, that little brother in our family that uh, just kind of dumb. Mine, mine is named Tyson. And uh, there was a uh, a couple years back where I was traveling to California. My brother is in love with California and he, uh, uh, he, li he lives in Long Beach. Uh, Long Beach is two cities, really. There's the Marina side, which is all the rich people. And then there's the other side that is not rich people. Uh, it's, it's densely packed and it's one of the last affordable I use that word barely, affordable places in, in Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles to live. And so it's filled with just, just deviants. Everybody thinks they're a fucking rock star with face tattoos. Um, but um, I was visiting for, uh, I, was, I was going to see Epsilon, uh, Apex Junior, and then a couple other companies uh, at the time to by uh pellets of dead woofers but uh, so I, I my brother is like hey man thanks for coming out to la and visiting let me show you a good time just let me take out the dinner it's nice to buy my big brother some dinner i was like okay mm -hmm. and so um my brother takes me to this place that's it's off it's just off the beach but it's near the beach you know so it you know it still has that beach feel to it and uh, we get there and he, he, he tries to use a coupon that, he, that was expired three years prior. And um, he, of course, calls the manager over like he's a big shot. And the manager is trying to explain to him that, that that was two owners ago. And that the only way that they would honor the coupon is if we bought like uh, $200 in drinks <laughs> and, and food. And, and, and. I could tell he, he did not want to spend that much. And so, you know, out of pride, he says, sure. And, I, and so finally, I just said, Ty, let's let's go. And then I, I just looked up real quick on my phone and I saw Outback, which Sherry and I love because it's not Applebee's, uh, but it's not, you know, a fancy place on the beach. So we ended up going to Apple or not Applebee's, sorry. We ended up going to uh, Outback and uh, it was a little more expensive just because it's in California, but um, I think we only I, I I tipped heavy, which he which also pissed him off because he he didn't feel the service was great. But then again, um, he also tried to order a uh, fruit punch, so <laughs> and and felt like Outback uh, wasn't the shit as I as I exclaimed um, because they didn't have fruit punch, so. But uh, uh, it's always it's always good to have a Tyson in your family just just to keep you grounded and help you realize that you're you are definitely not crazy. So, but um, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, the nerdy girls. So the future of nerdy girls. So um, the more that I talk to the lawyer, the more that I, I see this problem, and I wanted to entertain the idea of what if. You know, what if my worst uh, fantasies came true, which was that nerdy girls were able to secure a trademark on the name Robot Underground. 
and that I had to give up all of my URLs, which is probably about 20, yeah, probably about 20 URLs uh, and, you know, use of the name and things like that. But um, the problem is, is that these are, biology is stronger than uh, most people's willpower. And you got to understand that these are two young girls uh, that haven't even, you know, uh, they haven't been exposed to the world as well. They've been homeschooled and they live in a small town. And um, in that small town, they are definitely superstars, which I say good for them. Um, but um, sweet little Grady Spaghetti, uh, there's a couple of videos where you can see that she's got, I mean, I know you're not supposed to talk about women's bodies, but I'm going to talk about women's bodies. Um, uh, she's got a super fat ass and, uh, and she's got a cute face. And so, um, she is going to be treated so well by young black men in college that she will not know what happened. And, you know, just like in the Royal family, uh, Prince Harry is, is going to mix the races and, uh, you know, he, he does, he's the, he, Prince Harry is the younger, you know, kid. So he's, he, he's, he takes more risks. He knows that the, the family name is not really resting on his shoulders. And so, I mean, he, I think he made a great choice. Megan is stunningly beautiful. And, uh, but, uh, so we'll see what choice that, uh, Grady Spaghetti makes. Um, I, I, I think that she's going to be in a more position to feel her, eggs tick tocking uh and uh will help make a baby uncle parker on on the other hand um see i don't even know but i'm just assuming uh because of her aggressive behavior that she's on hormone therapy uh to transition to be a man um that someday she will have her micro penis or he will have his micro penis and um then, of course, when he dips into that world of being a man, it will be a, quite a shock because being a man is not easy, and uh, especially around other men. And um, if you only have a light switch to compete with, it's, it's very, very tough. And also, the other side is that when you're looking for a companion, um, you will find that most women do not prefer trans men. In fact, women are more... Uh, What's the word? They they have the ability to change their mind um, more, more than men. So, but um, I and I think that both girls will just lose steam about this thing anyway, and then their mom Jill will end up with a brand and then try to leverage me, and I will have since been to the moon and back, so I don't give a shit. So that's the worst thing that can happen. But uh, that's the what what I that's my opinion on the future of nerdy girls. But um, let's see. I also wanted to talk about other rich people. Uh, Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith um, is going to open up a restaurant that will cater to the needs of homeless people. Uh, the ridiculousness of, of rich and famous people um, is just... You know, I think this this one thing about this pandemic that's really brought out in people is the delusion, the delusions, uh, the hopes and dreams that they have uh, expressed outwardly. Um, Jaden, that's called a soup kitchen, and it already exists, and it's already gross, and uh, homeless people litter everywhere. Uh, even when they're getting free food, they do not take care of the things that they take care of. Their priorities are... Um, other things, uh, typically themselves. And I have uh, many, many, many firsthand experiences with the people of the homeless nation. And so I do not recommend that. I recommend um, very strict rules for housing. Uh, I do suggest affordable housing. And then, of course, a job in the way that uh, helps pay for those things. That's really what Jaden needs to do. Uh, basically like open up a mining town where the 
company owns the store, owns the housing, owns everything, because that's the only way that you can control it for those kinds of people. And if they don't abide, then they get kicked out and they're back to being homeless. And what's, what you'll find out is that many people uh, will choose homelessness over following rules. And that's one of the problems of homelessness. Uh, so in order to combat that for society's sake, you need to make things rough uh, or at least definitely make them work for um, uh, the living that they want to live, which is, you know, just doing drugs in alleys. And so um, whenever you donate to homeless people or give money, don't don't do that. That makes that that actually is worse for them because then that it's it suspends their excursion into the life of being homeless. It, uh, it enables them. And uh, that's exactly why you're giving the money to them is so that they, they aren't, right? Or to relieve their suffering. And what's important to understand it is as life is suffering and suffering is a choice. And so if you know that, then you will realize that the best thing you can do is uh, tell homeless people to scat, get out of here. And so um, that's why I do that. Um, it may seem mean and heartless, but it's not. It's actually because I care. So it's sort of the same theory behind. Uh, there's a great episode of um, American Dad. Uh, actually, it's a. I think it's a two, two part series or two part episode where um, they talk about Krampus in, uh, versus Santa Claus. That Santa Claus is actually the evil one, and Krampus is the one that loves you because he's willing to um, tell you that you're being bad. So, but uh, I'll put a link to that as well. Um, traveling Tyson, future nerdy girls, Ron Jeremy, ah, the meat of the Sunday sermon racism. So it's important not to judge the people who are displaying what you think is racism. First of all, judgment does not cure them. It makes things worse because then they feel judged for something that they believe in their heart, right? So what's also something that people hold dearly in their heart is religion. So if you persecute someone for their religion, that is wrong, right? Um, but really it's not that religion is somehow magical. It's that that's a personal belief. Whether it's right or wrong, whether it's based on fact or fiction, does not matter uh, because the, the person being persecuted believes it, you know, in their heart. So there, you know, so to make the argument, there are a lot of religions that are just dumb, uh, but you can still believe in them and they are still protected. And the future of racism is religion that. Um, I, and I encourage it. I encourage, if you want to be racist, that you need to protect yourself with religion. Uh, that that's the only, that's the last blanket because it's the dumbest thing in the world. Hate crimes, you know, like because you hate somebody, like you're punished extra. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Um, and it's in its biased and it's, it's worse than racism. Uh, uh, because that's a choice by the state and by the people to basically scarlet letter you uh, and shame, which is exactly what makes those things worse. So um, I encourage you, especially if you're Christian, is to not only forgive people that are racist, but to love them and honor their reality and help them even create a religion around it so that they can be all the racists they want in their pure white world. Um, that's, that's how you end racism, is you love it. And you, I mean, not like, you know, love it, but <laughs> I tell you what, you get to say the N-word all you want. So, but um, uh, that's really the secret to end racism is, is through love and to honor people's reality. Uh, and, you know, people will uh, rebel when you try to persecute them. They will rebel to the end. And so it really is just something that you have to allow to die. But I know in this uh, woke culture that it's, what's funny is the, the irony of woke culture is that these are young people trying to um, teach society something and uh, all they do is annoy 
society and cause trouble. And, uh, and so the best thing you can do is, uh, again, have patience and love in your heart and uh, consideration for others' opinions. And so um, I, I had also come up with the, the same idea. It's also what's great about having it as a religion is that it protects you so that you can express those views, to, so that you can uh, be yourself. Uh, which is what all the kids want to be, right? They all want to be themselves and they want to be gender fluid and they want to be all that stuff. And the, the way that you protect that is through a religion. So, um, but I remember years ago when um, the the gay peoples wanted to marry one another and I had wrote a email to the the leader of the gays, which is Advocate Magazine, and said, why don't you make this a First Amendment issue so that you have the churches on your side and say, you know, like you basically start a religion that is based on being gay. And uh, that way it's protected under the First Amendment and not a civil uh, pursuit. Well, of course, the the way to keep everyone enslaved and uninformed is to, do, is to give away the civil uh, restrictions, which is what Obama did. Not that Obama is good or bad, it just... That's what the, the government decided to do was say federal employees can now get, get married and then uh, sort of breaks the, 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 the levy and the levy gives way. And then everybody's like, ah, oh, fuck it. I guess we, I guess we got to let gay people get married. Well, you know, then you see the backlash. So because now you're making businesses do something they don't want to do. Um, and, and, th and that causes violence. And if they had taken the other path, which was more. American, more uh, true to what America was founded on, uh, the ideas that uh, you're free to do whatever the fuck you want to do as long as you don't hurt anybody else's stuff or hurt anybody else's uh, property. So Thomas Paine, I think that's a, a direct quote. Uh, don't quote me on that, but read Thomas Paine yourself. So, but um, um, that's how you end racism as you sanction it in a religion so but um the coffee is ready and my glipizide is kicked in because i'm feeling a little um dizzy and uh ready for sugar so but i love you guys have a good week um i will talk to you later <laughs>